What is going on? Welcome back to Fanatic Journey. So today we're going to talk to you on LQR House. I want to go over some of the current data points, what's been coming out from the company itself, and go over everything else you need to know. But first, make sure to hit that thumbs up and subscribe. Always greatly appreciate that. And with that said, let's get right to it. So based on Friday, it did go up 3.76%. Hell of a lot of volatility. So 505 the high, 417 is the low. And that'll make a little bit more sense on potentially what the stock is trying to do in the short term. Aside from that, 571,000 shares were traded, 1.3 million is the average. So a little bit low for the volume, but then again, that's kind of normal for a Friday, so that yeah, makes sense. When it comes down to some of the recent updates, there was a Form 4 that was submitted, as well as a amended Form 4, and it just shows Sean, the CEO, buying some shares using his own money. So very good stuff, in my opinion, and that is exactly what I like to see in any CEO, just putting his damn money where his mouth is. If he believes in the company, then do that. Not just get awarded shares or whatever else. Like, So I, I like that. And also on a side note, the amended Form 4 was just to accommodate because of the whole reverse stock split that did occur on November the 30th. And that was a 1 for 60. So kind of good stuff. Aside from that, though, there has been a lot of good PR that's been coming out, starting with the January third one and so that does show that there was about 458 percent year-over-year growth on the revenue and so ultimately December 2023 they did have about three hundred and thirty nine thousand dollars in revenue fairly good stuff it does say that was anticipated and even when I did cover this company in September I believe 2023 like a lot of the stats out there did show that it was going to have about 20 to 30 percent compound annual growth within just due to the sector and the sector obviously the alcohol sector is kind of resilient to recessions and whatever else in theory of course because no matter what if there's a recession or not people are just out there spending money buying alcohol as sometimes backwards as that sounds it's the truth so in reality uh, lqr is very well suited for just the broader economy it just needs to get ingrained and that's what it's been doing over the last little bit expansion is good for the company bad for current investors so that's kind of what has happened over the last little bit but technically a lot of the data points that's been coming out linked to consumers is very strong so that'll help lqr so much more i'll play this video near the tail end because it talks on all consumer stuff and how they are driving the train as what they call it which aka the economy so i think that's uh, going to be a very good video for a lot of investors to listen to because it would really be correlated with lqr in the end but once again, uh, this was fairly good news. They didn't actually say when their actual earnings are going to be. I've been monitoring and looking all over that and nothing submitted so far. So uh, we just have to sit tight and wait because that is something that I've been bringing up throughout my videos is just the fact that I need to know how much cash uh, they do have because all of this news that's been coming out is all fine and dandy. It's all amazing stuff. But I like to look at the balance sheet and based on their last earnings, which I think came out in November, they had about 1.86 million in cash equivalents and short-term investments, very little debt, but they are burning through about 4.45 million. That was back then. A lot has changed since then, I, I assume. But technically, I want to know how much cash the, they do currently have right now, because even when it comes down to their buyback, I was very hesitant about their buyback because they just don't have the cash. It doesn't make sense to do that, right? like maybe in their head that's one variation to go against shorting because ever since lqr came out on the scene it's been massively shorted as crappy as that sounds but still um again that's maybe why they decided to do the buyback or just to add some incentive for investors i'm not really sure so their upcoming earnings is going to be very critical to them in my opinion but over and above that though this news did come out on january the 4th and it just says lqr house announces transfer of repurchased shares to its account held by its transfer agent following the commencement of the buyback program. So, so far it looks like they purchased about 576,000 shares, 15% of the total outstanding share account. Fairly good stuff, but it does say that they are moving it to their transfer agent, which is VStock. Never heard of VStock before, but aside from that though, the CEO is actually even saying that if any shareholders want to do the exact same as what the company is doing for them to email him personally, as you can kind of see right here, and he's going to initiate the process because 
depending on who your broker is, like whether it be TD or Interactive Brokers, Robinhood or whoever, sometimes there's lawsuits out there where whether you are lending them out on purpose or not, like brokers take them. And that's a very crappy scenario. And I'm not here to say that that is the circumstance for LQR, but there's other lawsuits out there that is citing that. So potentially uh, by them moving your shares or their shares and plus any shareholders to their transfer agent, that eliminates that likelihood of synthetic shares being out there. Because even looking right now, there is a ton of failure to delivers. So a lot of manipulation behind the scenes, even when it comes down to shorts, there's about 10.82% of the free float being shorted. It is on the threshold list as well. Um, and shorts don't seem to be returning any amount to kind of rectify that. On Friday, there's about 6.25 thousand shares returned, 284.5 thousand shares overall are being shorted, and cost to borrow average is 367.64%. So very interesting stuff behind the scenes. So let me know your thoughts if you are potentially thinking about moving your shares to their transfer agent, VStock, or if you're just going to keep it in your regular account. I feel like that is a, you have to be very committed to LQR long-term for you to do that. But still, this is a very out of the box mentality. A lot of companies try to figure out how to go against and level the playing field against shorts. Um, so for instance, GNS has done a spin-off company in the past. Others just tried to do lawsuits and buybacks. So I feel like that is now the new thing to do is what can we do to fight against naked shorting or just shorts manipulation, whatever else. So this is their version to do clearly the buyback and transfer shares out. Maybe there might be a lawsuit coming in the foreseeable future. I feel like that would be very advantageous for the company but potentially very costly. I don't know, we'll just have to sit tight and wait. But surprisingly enough, if you actually look at the current ownership for LQR, which is based on the last 13 Fs that did come out, so nothing crazy, crazy recent, but you do see Virtuo and also Citadel. And so technically both are, and in the past have been accused of malicious acts, manipulation. So I don't know, maybe this isn't good. Virtuo is just the, like clearly a big market maker. So I don't know, maybe bigger institutions might get in for the long haul. I wouldn't really trust my investment with these institutions let me know your thoughts on that also on a side note while i'm still on interactive brokers based on the latest morningstar report it does show the fair market value for lqr being eight dollars and 96 cents so kind of interesting stuff when it comes down to that so i'm going to go over some of the technicals and just things that you need to know like i mentioned i'll go and play that video as well that'll put it in perspective on how consumers are really going to help lqr bigger picture so starting off with it closing at 440 one on Friday it is trading between this R1 and this R2 so 445 is going to be a key pivot for this upcoming week for you to watch for so that's going to be the strong resistance and then above that is going to be four dollars and 89 cents if it does kind of pull back potentially 417 is going to be that strong support and conveniently that is exactly the low for Friday so it bounced off of that kind of a good thing so overall you can tell that the broader market is bouncing off of a very strong support and trending higher so you'll really want to watch for it to kind of break this 445 going into next week in my opinion it's all going to come down to consumers and as well cpi data that is coming out on january the 11th but who knows uh, what do i know i'm not financial advisor you guys always do your own due diligence number of retail investors have been kind of flat and this is abnormal uh, throughout the market a lot of retail has been pulling out and that's a lot of big growth stocks and lqr seems to be retaining a lot of retail and that's clearly based on a lot of the good pr that's been coming out so behind the scenes lqr is doing something good stochastic you do see a nice deviation starting to form once again so black line above the red showing a nice bullish sentiment it is at 68 so if it does continue to go up potentially back to that five dollar range or maybe 520 530 it might be considered overbought at that stage and might need to retrace and pull back a little bit but that's just my own opinion of course again so with all that said lqr has constantly surprised me time and time again and most likely likely they will continue to surprise investors as well so i'm going to play this quick video it's i'm only going to play like a minute of this because it'll put it in perspective on what technically is going to be helping lqr behind the scenes 
was better than expected, showing that the U.S. economy added more jobs than anticipated in December, while the unemployment rate held steady at 3.7 percent. Here to share his take on the jobs data and what it could mean for the Fed's path forward is Mark Zandi, chief economist at Moody's Analytics. Mark, it's great to have you back on the show. To me, the takeaway here, okay, we, we, we saw the previous two months revised lower. We had the stronger number in December. We know December tends to be a little noisy. Um, but to me, the real takeaway here was the fact that, that, that wages continue to grow, and they're growing faster than inflation. What does that tell us? Good news. Uh, wage growth is 4%-ish. Inflation, CPI inflation is about 3% and moderating. So that means uh, real uh, wage growth is positive, about one percentage point. That means consumers' purchasing power is improving, and that's the fodder for continued spending. And, of course, it's the consumer that kind of drives the train. And as long as they're doing their part, hanging tough, spending, and with those real income gains they should, the economy should continue to move forward and recession remain at bay. So good news. Okay. Uh, last year, at a time where, at least to start the year, everybody was saying, oh, we're going to get a recession in 2023. You were like, oh, I'm not so sure that's going to happen. Your call proved to be the right one. So given what you just said, your expectations for 2024, and what are the key metrics or data that you're going to be watching to know that, in fact, a so-called soft landing is upon us? Yeah, well, thanks for calling that out. That's very kind of you, Morgan. I appreciate that. Uh, and I'm, you know, I feel pretty good about 24. Uh, you know, growth may not be quite as strong as in 2023. Fiscal policy is going to be a bit of a drag as opposed to a bit of a tailwind to growth. But uh, you know, the key always, in my mind, does go back to the consumer. They do drive the train. And you know, uh, there's just a lot of, I think, favorable conditions there. We mentioned, I mentioned, real wage growth. Uh, debt service burdens are low and uh, consumers have done a very good job of locking in stock prices and housing values are pretty close to the record high. So people's net worth is up. Got a lot of excess saving, particularly among the high income households, high middle income households. So, you know, lots of good reasons to think that consumers are going to continue to, you know, hang tough, do their thing. I don't, they're not going to spend with abandon, uh, but we don't need them to or want them to because that could be inflationary. But uh, just as long as they, continue to grow, uh, spending continues to grow at about 2% real, which is what we've been doing, we, we should be just fine. And there you have it. So obviously consumers are gonna be driving the broader market higher. And in turn, that's very much directly correlated to LQR and what they offer. So let me know your thoughts on LQR. Have you been buying? Have you been selling? What have you been doing with LQR? And one final thing I just wanted to share with you, take advantage of this promo. It has been extended up until January the 15th. Sign up for an account with Moomoo, throw $100 at it, and you get five free stocks. Each stock is valued up to $2,000. So take advantage of this. Link in the description below and also the comments. With all that said, appreciate all of you watching.